Hi guys, we're going to do some French polishing and uh, I've already started, this is an antique Victorian box and I've already prepared some of it because it, it, it would take too long to, to start right from scratch but I'll tell you what I've done so far I've, I've taken off the, the locks, the hinges and then I've covered the escutcheons with tape so as to keep those um, free from the polish. I've used a brush and brushed on French polish or button polish in this case which is very similar. I've put three, three coats on with a brush to start with just to build up the layers quite quickly. That's been drying over a week now, two weeks, something like that. It's gone hard and now this is going to seem harsh but we're going to be using sandpaper to take it back down again to flat it off because even though you can't see them the brush strokes will be in there and you'll notice when I start rubbing down the lines of the bristles. I'm going to be using this sandpaper to rub them down. This this is um, Abronet, it's flexible and um, when it gets clogged you just tap it and the uh, all the dust comes out. So it does last longer than the normal paper sandpaper um, and this this comes this is by Abronet I'm not endorsing this in any way this is the one I prefer to use and they come in the grades the same grades as any other paper and this is a 400 grade and I'll start rubbing it down in circular motions you can see where I've rubbed it on this little bit here. I've done all the sides and I've left this little bit to show you what I've been doing. So this this little bit's flat here. So I'll start rubbing down in circular motions. This does seem quite harsh, but you need to get it flat. You might notice on here strokes of still shiny bits. We we try to get them as there's some shiny bits there, but those are dense. You're never going to get those out dead flat. But I'm talking about just the brush strokes, not the little dents that are through wear and tear over the hundred years this box has been made. So again, you've got some clogging of the paper and it's gone. I'm not saying it doesn't wear down, it will eventually, but it will last a little bit longer. You don't have to throw it out so soon because of the clogged grit. Try to get as close as to this is scotching without ruining the paper. Nice circular motions. Don't be too heavy handed, but uh, enough to remove what you need to.
cloth like that. And that's not too bad. That's not too bad. If I move that about, you can still see some darker or shiny lines. You're not going to get them out completely, but try and get them as flat as possible. And it will definitely help with the finish that you get. You don't want to take all the polish off that, we've, that we uh, have put on. That, that's better. That's good. I think I'll go with that. Right. So that's everything rubbed down. Now it's for the polishing. I'm going to start with the top, but we've we've also got to polish these as well. If, and it's not easy. You've got the you've got the lid down like this. We can't polish down to the bottom where it's resting on the table because you're going to pick up dirt dust, and we, we, we need to be doing the underneath at the same time, just around these edges, and we can't do that if it's lying flat. And we've got no way of holding it either if it starts moving around or rubbing. We can't put our hands on it. So, what do we need? I've knocked up something like this. Well, I have knocked this up actually. And this will fit. We've got two, fit in the lid, we've got two pieces that fit very snugly, very very snugly into the lid. Okay, two braces across and a stick coming down. Okay, and now that's not going anywhere. I can, I can do the rubbering on that and I can do the underneath as well. I'm using the Libron button polish. Some baby oil, any type of min mineral oil will do. I'll explain this in a sec. Now you'll want a cloth. Now this is uh, an old sheet. You don't want new. Don't go out and buy a cheap new bed sheet to cut up. Use an old one because they're softer. They've been worn and they're a lot softer. Okay so that, that's what you're looking for. A nice a nice soft sheet, pillowcase, whatever. Just an old one, cut it up and cut it into um, a, a foot square or, or similar. Also using cotton waste. This is just strings of cotton. Okay. So if you if you were to cut this and you pulled off a piece of cotton out of it, that's what these are. And this is to fill the rubber.
and how much we need depends on how big an area the size of the rubber depends on the area you're doing. If you're doing a piano, you're going to need quite a big rubber. Something like this. I'll show you the size. A little bit more. What we're doing, soaking up some of the polish, squeeze the excess out, not too hard, we want to leave some in there, nice gentle squeeze. Okay, what we're also going to do, have a cloth handy to wipe your, the excess off your hands. Dip in the oil, and we're just flicking it on. We don't want a lot on there. All we're putting the oil on for is to ease the rubber, so it slides a lot easier. I've tried it without oil, and it sticks and pulls. I don't like it. Other polishers, they they will not use oil, but I prefer to. So it's a personal choice. Try it. Okay, to start, we need to spread the oil about. So nice big figure of eight movements. And we're getting the polish started. Now what you're looking for I don't know if that comes up on the video or not at the moment, but it's this uh, has got meths in, which is an alcohol, and as you spread it and you get this tail, and you can see see the alcohol evaporate. That is exactly what you're looking for. That's what we've got there. When we feel it's And then a stroke round bottom. When you feel it's it's spread out, then we can start to to rubber in circular motions. Then if you can pick up where the alcohol is evaporating, that's perfect.
and you keep doing that until the evaporation starts to disappear and you're not getting you're not getting so much of it and then you need to dip again squeeze out and start all over you don't need to do the oil every single time you dip the polish it's only when you feel it start to stick because this will burn if you leave it on one place this is why we've got to keep moving if you leave it on one part one place it will burn through it, it, it it'll act like um, this is red hot and it's just burning through it it just melts it so you've got to keep moving all the time do not stay in one place very important and although you can go over this a couple of times at one go then move on to something else just to let it dry it does dry very very quickly so uh, just move on and that's it really and we'll just keep going and going and going until we feel it's got enough on this doesn't get rubbed down with sandpaper by the way this is going to give you a nice rich gloss as you'd expect make sure you cover all the areas Don't forget, you don't have to rub the, that strip underneath as long as we put some polish on it. And that's starting to drag a little bit. Some more polish on there. It's looking, you might just see it's looking a bit dry around there. Suck it up and then just get the excess out. Wipe off your fingers because you don't want to be dripping onto here. You need to experiment on what you need. Do you need more polish? When things don't seem to be going right, do you need more polish? A little bit more oil? You got too much polish coming out? Just experiment. You will eventually work out what it is. As long as you've got that evaporating tail, that is what you're looking for. Change your direction. And the pattern in which you, you move. And then you're not building up on one particular pattern. 
you'll know if you put too much oil on you get you start getting this orange peel effect and then you've got to try and get rid of that using a bit more of the, uh, the methylated spirits in America they call it something else Right, I've moved over to the, the base of the box I'm giving the uh, top a little bit of time to harden <coughs> but I'll go back to this and uh, as you can see I've got the, the box on top of a piece of wood so I can get right down to the bottom edge and we're using exactly the same technique to cover the box. I've just recharged the rubber with polish, uh, one dab of oil on it and spread that out Got a hair on it there turn the box around Exactly the same technique as before. And we're back onto the lid. I've been doing this for an hour, hour and a half, close to an hour and a half. I've been doing the base as, as well um, while I gave that a few minutes to, to harden and then keep coming back to it. But at this point now, I think there's enough layers on there. To finish. So the first thing we need to do when we finish is to take the oil out that we put in. So I'm charging, just see there, I'm charging this rubber up. What I'm going to do is put a little bit of meths not too much. Neat Meths which is the uh, ingredient in the polish but we're adding a little bit more Meths because it will take off some of the polish, top polish, but it will also take off some of the oil as well. But we're not going to go in circles, we're going to go in strips backwards and forwards. Remember not to go straight on and push. We're coming we're coming making a, a movement in and across and off. No way are we stopping anywhere on that polish. around every bit that we've polished there we go. and the underneath don't forget that give it a second you don't want to put too much on and then we'll go again Thank you. 
there is still a little bit of oil in there you can you can tell the difference because you've got shiny bits and you've got sort of dull bits um, like you did with the sandpaper uh, this time we're not, we're not getting rid of the shine, it's the opposite, we're not trying to get rid of the shiny bits it's the dull bit, that's the oil we don't want to do this too many times because it does take layers off very very thin layers but it does so um, go again and I think we're there that's that done give that time to dry probably a, around a week or two it might seem dry on the top but it will be it will be still wet soft and uh, we need it to dry completely so I'll show you again when that dries right that's been sitting for about a week now and you can see the shine on that that is a beauty that's the lid as you can see made sure we did underneath as well and that's that done and there is the base beautiful now high gloss like that doesn't always suit uh, all the boxes you know there are different types of boxes and they and they need they need different finishes but I'm going to leave this one in the uh, in the gloss because I think it suits this box now I've done another one well, I've been waiting for that one to dry I did this one straight afterwards and the gloss okay it, it it just doesn't suit it you know there's a nice gloss on that I didn't put as much polish on because um, I knew that it wasn't going to suit this box uh, high gloss wouldn't suit this so what I'm going to do what you can do is I know it's all the hard work you've put in but we're going to rub it down again but not with paper this is a four zero wire wall when I say four zero it's the grade so it's zero 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 four zeros and it's very fine wire wall and what, we, what I'm going to do is just very lightly go over the gloss just to take the shine off I'm not going to press hard and gouge into it just very lightly I just want to take the shine out very very light and go with the grain where you can That'll certainly help the look of it same with the base you can see this one has still got the lining inside of it the velvet needs a good clean but uh, it's in good order Okay. 
it's got brass feet or feet on it as well. Some come with feet on, some don't. A high gloss can sometimes cheapen a box. It might just look like it's been lacquered very cheaply. This is why we don't always leave a high gloss. And antique boxes don't tend to have a high gloss anyways because they're 100, 200 years old. They're, they've been handled and worn and you know, and they don't always have a high gloss. They have a, they have more of a luster. And um, you know, this is what we can try and give this with the wire wall. It doesn't show the grain marks, the scratch marks, as much as it would on a using sandpaper, or even a very fine sandpaper. But it, you know, it's not quite the same as the wire wall. This is this is quite soft, you know, and uh, we just make sure we we've, we've taken out all of the shine, the high gloss, and then I'm going to put some. did this in exactly the same way. Um, the, the brackets I used for the larger box I cut down for the smaller one. So if you've got several boxes always start with the larger one. You make the bracket you can cut it down for the smaller and smaller boxes and then you've only got to make one. Here it is, cut down. I did on this particular one. If you find that you may have cut off a little bit too much, I haven't here, but I've put double sided tape on anyway. We just, just hold it in place whilst you polish it. Right, that's that done. Because this is a dark coloured box, I'm going to use a black polish. And the black will go into all the little sort of corners and crevices and then give it that antique look. It looks as though the dirt's gathered there. And that we haven't cleaned it out. So let's just put that on. Nice liberal coating of wax. We don't want the wax to set on there because it's so much harder to to get off. And put it on and we'll get it off almost straight away. soft cloth and to buff that back up. In this case it's a uh, it's an old pillowcase. It's been used and it's soft, softened up. 
Wydale for this. And you can see how that's coming up more of a luster now rather than a high gloss shine and it's going to suit this box perfectly. a look at that. See, using the wire wall there, are, there aren't any scratch marks on there. They're so fine that the, the wax will fill them in. That's okay if you want to give it another coat, give it another coat. Same with this. I'm going to go with the grey. I'm putting it on with a with a brush here. Circular motions getting to all the little cracks and whatever and then Go with the grain and we'll do the top as well. Because this box was already lined, I've put some masking tape just around the top edge, stop any drips, and also stop the wax going on. Give it a good rough up. And together, tapes in the way I can't put it together properly, but it looks so much better than a high gloss. The high gloss would not have suited that. So there we have it. That's how you French polish, and these are the results you get. And so I'm, I'm leaving the gloss on this particular one because I think it suits it. What we'll do before we go I'm going to scratch it with a knife. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to take this off.
just need a very light cut around just to break the polish on the top don't press on because you might slip keep it nice and light Mother Pearl needs a little bit of a clean up, but that's it. Almost like a mirror, you can see the light. See a reflection of other stuff. Fantastic. Well guys, let me know how you get on with yours. I'll be interested to hear. Thanks for watching. Well, before, before I finish, look out for my next video because I'm going to show you how to line the box. And I'll show you how this one turned out as well. See ya.